Welcome everybody to World Embroidery Day 2023 in a very special stitching around the world. So we've had a really super response to this one this year. This is our biggest and best one yet. Thank you very much to everybody who's joined in. We've got some familiar faces. It's nice to see you again and lots of new faces and some new countries as well, which is really wonderful to see. And we've got 11 different countries covered and we've got six different continents. So we truly are going around the world. So what is World Embroidery Day? Well, it's a chance to get together and to celebrate this beautiful art form and to share with each other what you have been making wherever you are in the world and whatever kind of embroidery it is and just to showcase your talent and to show the rest of the world what we are all doing and why this, um, this art form is so beautiful. And as I mentioned, this was the best response ever. So um, it is a little bit of a longer video this time. So I do have a favour to ask you, and that is that you watch everybody that's contributed. Even if you don't do it all in one go, pause the video, come back and watch later and see um, everybody's work because they're all worthy of watching. And I can't put them all at the beginning, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to. And if you are an embroiderer, but you haven't joined in, but you love embroidery and you know somebody else who loves embroidery, then this is the video to share. Do show them this video and we can spread the embroidery love and maybe next year it will be even bigger and better. So for those of you who have contributed, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to see your videos. If you have a YouTube channel or an Instagram link, we have um, included it below in the description below. So if you see something you like and you're watching and you want to see more of their work, do go and check out their links. If you're watching and we haven't included you, it's because maybe we can't find you. So please do send me the link if you um, do have something you want to link to. I'll put an email in the description below this video. Just send your link over and we'll make sure that's on there so that other people can go and have a look at your work. So I think that is enough from me. I want to get straight on with the video and see what you have been stitching. And we are going to start by going all the way around the other side of the world from where I am anyway in Australia. And we're going to start with Jane. Jane has supported me through every one of these videos and I'm really excited to see what you're making, Jane. So take it away. Hello everybody, I'm Jane from Mini Water in Australia and I'm just delighted to take part in one of these stitching around the world videos again. Uh, Sarah and Jonathan, you've given us a fabulous opportunity because really we're a fabulous stitching community and how nice it is to be able to share the ties that bind. Anyway, I'll get on with it. Uh, look, I'm a bit of a bird nerd and we're lucky here where we're, we're surrounded by a lot of birds. Uh, so in springtime when the birds molt, uh, I gathered up a lot of, uh, a lot of um, down and I wanted to stitch, and I did stitch, a little baby bird. Uh, I used his down feathers, it was a stump work piece, teddy bear eyes, a little bit of leather, wired leather beak, uh, wired feet, sitting on a branch I did some stump work leaves, there's a little caterpillar there. Uh, he now lives under a glass dome because he started to get a little bit grubby. Uh, and the next one uh, that I chose to do, or I got my inspiration from a Judy Wilford book. Uh, embroidered birds and their habitats. This book is just astounding. Judy has also done an embroidered landscapes book previously. Uh, sadly, she's passed away now, so there'll be no more. But the book, I, uh, the one I chose to do is a white-cheeked honey eater, which are endemic uh, to us here at Mini Water. Uh, they fly in flocks of oh, up to 15, 20 at a time. We get them through our garden all through the year and they absolutely adore um, water. You might be able to see, you possibly can. I did a stump work piece. Uh, I stitched him on a separate hoop. Uh, when I'd finished, not the beak and not the eyes, but I took him off, stitched him onto my background piece because I'd layered the fabric stitched all the grevillea flowers because he's a honey eater, he likes the nectar, uh, and then applied him to the background, stuffed him, and then moulded him a little bit and gave him a leather beak, which I put a little bit of pearlescent paint just to give it a ch change of colour. And again, he also has teddy bear eyes. So there you are, there's two that I've been able to share with you, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody else has to share. Bye-bye now. Hello everyone, my name is Patricia. I live in the United States in a town called Wesley Chapel. I love stitching flowers and I love my dogs and since my dogs are way cuter than I am, they are in the video <laughs> instead of myself. Um, the last one that I just finished is um, this sunflower. 
there's a bunch of mistakes in there, but I still love it. These two I did about a month ago, and the other two that I did about a month ago are these two. The one on the left is actually supposed to be a wedding announcement that I messed up, so I kept the flowers. I want to wish you all a happy embroidery day, and I look forward to seeing all your videos. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm in Scotland. Um, and I just want to say thanks ever so much to Sarah for all your amazing tutorials. I started learning embroidery last year, kind of teaching myself with your help. And um, I did that as my stitch a day thing in 2022, which you have very kindly featured once. Um, but more recently, I fairly recently moved up to Scotland and I live in a place called Fisherton. So I've been doing a whole load of, don't know which way up that is, that way up, fishy things in black work and white work, those are both from kits. And they're also just trying out a few threads in needle lace to see how they work. Um, but more recently I kind of got into wanting to have a go at boxes and I live near a place called Killeen Castle. And in Killeen Castle, there's a walled garden which has a little cottage. And my partner had said that he always expected to see Bill the Lizard from Alice in Wonderland shooting out the chimney of this cottage. And it made me think, why don't I make a little cottage book so I actually this is from another kind of book where I took the inspiration from but I didn't use her embroidery and I made this little box which is based on Alice in Wonderland so that's her with the white rabbit her big arm knocking the white rabbit into his cucumber frame and those are the guinea pigs on the front can you see them yeah guinea pigs on the front with the ladder and Alice's hair and dress in the window and there's beads, which are going to be pebbles, which they're going to throw at the window. And there's a little bottle there, which they're going to help Bill the Lizard drink brandy when he gets down from the chimney. And I had to teach myself a bit of needle felting to make Bill. He's not very expert. He's my very first bit of needle felting. And on this side, these are little wired leaves. This is actually from a piece of willow sculpture inspired by a bit of willow sculpture at Killeen Castle and I've got little raspberries again made with a kind of needle lace technique and wrapped bead apple and Sarah's amazing turkey rug and woven pico tutorials bean grass and a bit of I don't know brackeny ferny thing and then on the back there's no door on this because you can't see the door from the from the walled garden on the back that's probably the wrong way around but anyway, it says if they had any sense, they'd take the roof off, but it says it forwards. Um, and that's a line that Alice speaks when she's inside the house. And then inside, it opens up. Poor old Bill drops down. It opens up like that. And inside is a box. And inside the box, there is another box which is very lined and I kind of use it to keep beads and bits and pieces in. That's a bit of lavender, hopefully to keep the moths off. And that all fits in there. And then like that. And then I also made a little book, again, inspired by you, Sarah, um, which is about, it says, eat me crossed out and says, read me. And it's a little book just explaining the story of how this box got put together. And also an idea of how long it took me and kind of costs. So that's been great fun. But a lot of the bits and pieces that I've learned to go into that have come from come from you, Sarah. So thank you very much. Hello, my name is Shay. I live in BC, Canada. And this is, I think, my fourth attempt at an embroidery project. Uh, I'm making this for my best friend's mother's birthday. And I'm having a lot of fun uh, learning a new skill like this. Normally I crochet, but I have done one or two small embroidery projects before. I, uh, I was going to stop at just the center with the leaves, but uh, it kind of got away uh, from me. And uh, my hands just kept going, so I'm not sure uh, what this is going to end up looking like in the end. It is, however, a tote bag for grocery shopping, because uh, my friend's mom needs more of those.
uh, well, goodbye. Hi, Sarah. This is Bernard. Um, I'm in central New Hampshire in the United States on a very warm afternoon. Um, I've just been stitching applique on the very last border of a quilt that I've been working on since last July. It's been almost a year. It'll be in exactly a year on the 28th. Um, these um, forget-me-nots are the latest stitching on this border. This is the outside bottom border of the quilt. It, um, this is still a work in progress, but when this border is done, the quilt will be done. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's some uh, asters. They still need their little center pieces. Um, so there's not a lot of embroidery on this quilt, but there's a lot of stitching. <laughs> it's a large quilt, but um, the embroidery that I have on the quilt mostly stem stitch and um, French knots and a little bit of satin stitch. I learned it from your wonderful channel. Um, so I'm going to now um, put a few pictures into my video. I have to take a picture of the quilt over this railing behind me because it's so large and I have to put it on the grass. Um, and then I'll have a few close-up shots of uh, some of the embroidery that is there. So thank you for your wonderful channel. I keep thinking how wonderful it would have been if the internet had existed when I was a teenager and we had wonderful channels like yours. Um, wow, that would have been something. Anyway, thanks again. Bye. Hello, my name is Liz Hopewell and I'm from North Norfolk in the UK. I was taken with Sarah's stitched yearbook and thought it was a good idea to just be able to do different panels and put them all in one place. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I made the book as per Sarah's instructions and I covered it with felt and obviously put a pattern around it. I used Sarah's dragonfly for the front with the wings stitched down. And I wanted to do um, a particular theme for each month, if I could, something that was relevant to that time of year. So this is how my book turned out. So opening up the first page. So for January, I had A Winter Wonderland. February, I did um, Valentine's Day. I had two little stump work heads actually in my drawer that I did years ago when I was practicing stump work. So I was able to utilize those at long last. March was a sort of woodland scene with March hares. April, it was Easter. So I've got the Easter chicks and the religious theme at the top and um, April showers as well. For May, coming into spring, I actually found my first little piece of Ornui gold work that I tried out um, of a ladybird. So rather than have it sitting in the drawer any longer, I popped that on there, added some little ladybird motifs and some flowers. For June, I wanted flowers again, but surprising what you come across in your drawer of goodies. I did this little cat's face um, quite a long time ago, so I thought I'd put that on there and made a symmetrical pattern at the top and bottom. And then for Ju July, it was um, a summer theme, so it was a nice beach scene. And in August, we were still in summer, so I did an under the sea this time. And I had a little motive um, seahorse on a piece of material, had it for ages. So I thought rather than just put it on, 
I'll bead it as well to make it pretty. And then September was a sort of abstract autumn colour theme with leaves. October, it was Halloween. And then November, Remembrance with the Poppies. And then Christmas was just a plain sort of pretty abstract Christmas page. So I hope you enjoyed the book as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. My name is Carrie. I am from Ohio in America. I started embroidery doing my own stuff about a year ago. I collect vintage embroidery and cruel um, and then decided to start watching videos and learn how to do it myself. So that's what I've been doing. Um, my latest project is this denim jacket for my granddaughter. Um, I've got the pattern from a book, The Embroidered Garden. Uh, Kazuko Aoki, I think, or I'm not really sure how to say her name. Um, my daughter-in-law found me a couple books at a used bookstore. So I've been doing some patterns from there, a lot of floral stuff. But I loved this for the back of this denim jacket. And then I added the ladybug and I added some bees. Some woven roses. A little red bird, a dragonfly, some lavender. This is a 12 month size. She's not near ready to wear it yet, so I have plenty of time to add more things. But I really love the way the back turned out. So I wanted to share that with you. I am currently working on a couple projects that you've posted on your website. So once I get those finished, I will send my results to you. Bye. Hello everybody, my name is Connie, I'm from the Netherlands and I live close to Rotterdam. What I'd like to share with you is my fabric book I'm working on. Um, I'm trying to incorporate as many crafts as I can. A lot of the crafts I've developed over a lifetime, but also a lot of crafts I learned recently. So here we go. So the first month I did was uh, January. And January um, is actually a scenery of Lapland. Um, I was inspired after my holiday there. And as you can see, you've got like the northern lights there and the frozen lakes and um, Every time I look at this, I think of my holiday, which is lovely. And the other side of January, some stitching there, some sashiko, which is like a new hobby of mine. And another new hobby is machine embroidery. And this is the first piece of machine embroidery I've ever done, inspired after the holiday in the Canary Islands. And then March, the snowdrops, the felt, all the patchwork background, um, and the other side of March, machine embroidery, the March hair, and some bluebells there. And then I've got April, um, April showers, sunshine, the rainbow made out made of lots of billion knots. Uh, I needed to master that and I think I've done it. And actually I love doing them now. And then the other side in April I got my bicycle out again. As I said I live in Holland uh, and the bulb fields are a flower then and it's just a great time to go cycling. For May I've made a Liburnum uh, arch. Uh, this is all uh, tatted. I've, I've, done, I've done tatting for years and I, I, it's not a, a thing I really like doing. And then the other side, um, I decided to have a go at stunt work. And I've done uh, Sarah's bumblebee and eggs and I even did a tiny sisha mirror in there, which was quite difficult. <laughs> June, I've got a butterfly made out of lots of different buttons. And the other side of June is slow stitching. This is actually the first slow stitching piece I've ever done. I liked it so much and decided to make a fabric book. And then we move on to July. And July, I decided to do cross stitch. The nice beach sceneries there. 
And then my last piece I've done is actually um, Sarah's design of the underwater uh, scenery, which I've changed quite a bit. I just I love little jellyfish I've done here. Um, Then I've got some loose pieces. September is another piece of slow stitching. And I've got a bit of October, which is a lot of felting and the crochet, crochet little owl there. December is sort of uh, wool felt and some uh, machine embroidery as well. And a little bit of love there. And at the moment I'm working on August and I'm actually learning to do uh, lace needling so that's my attempt of lace needling and it's going to be like a postcard scenery. That's it, thank you for watching. Hello Sarah and Sarah's YouTube viewers. My name is Lily Angel. I'm from Washington State in the USA. I'd like to show you two examples of some things that I've been creating in the last oh, year or so. The first one is based on slow stitching from one of Sarah's videos that I watched. And this is a book jacket cover. And it's made out of quilting fabrics and just scraps of things. And I've done some beading, which is really hard to see on the video. But there's a little bit of sparkle and various stitches, um, trying some things out, doing some short stitches in the sunburst. And then this is the, the back side of the little cover. It's more just following different designs in the fabrics and just enjoying just the feeling of the different, different fabrics. and what embroidery does to the texture of the fabric as you work it. Uh, this is the inside with the flaps on both sides. I like this little tree. I tried to put a little sunburst in it and a little sparkle. Um, it was a fun little project. It was enjoyable to say the least. And my other thing that I like to do is I like to make little characters and this is a little this is a little uh, fantasy parrot that I designed and there's a lot of embroidery in this guy it took um oh I don't I don't remember how long it took to make but it was quite fun it was the construction was the fun part obviously I enjoyed making the beak and the little eyes and the feathers, particularly along the head and the tail feathers in the item. And there's a lot of embroidery stitches going on there. And he's totally self-supporting. If I can get him to stand up for you here, I will. And there he is. So thank you very much for letting me share World Embroidery Day with you. And have a very good day. Bye.
Hello, my name's Lisa and um, I'm just wanting to show you what embroidery I've been doing. I've been embroidering for just over a year. I started in lockdown and you won't be able to see them very closely, but there's a few um, on the wall there and they're dotted all about the house. But I thought I'd show you some other finished pieces. This is one that I really enjoyed doing. Um, lovely little sort of farm garden type scene. Then this one I got from a, a charity shop. The Quinoline Lady. I really enjoyed doing that as well. I love blue and white. And this was another, uh, I think this was an eBay, got from eBay. Lovely agate. So they're my um, embroidery pieces. And at the moment, what I'm doing is um, I've just started learning English paper piecing. And uh, I'm working on my hexes. I'm loving stitching. Um, I've got health problems and uh, it helps distract from pain. And uh, yeah, I'm just loving learning from all the wonderful YouTube channels, all different techniques. And um, I sit here in my recliner chair. I've got, shall I show you the mess? I'll show you the mess, look. All my goodies, look, and my fabrics. And I've just been doing some, um, learning kawundi is it kawundi quilting um i want to try sas sasiko is it but there's so many lovely things thank you for letting me show you bye oh and i'm in the uk hello my name's Elise from boss up mixed media embroidery art i am so glad to be part of serif Avenger of the 2023 Embroidery, World Embroidery, which is July the 30th, okay? I have my image here, which is my embroidery, has to do with the Balloon Girl. If you feature, follow me on my channel, this is what we're doing now. And it has so many details, like we going, we do the bead work, we doing different stitches, like the running stitch, the um back stitch, okay, satin stitch and something very simple for beginners. So if you really want to learn something on YouTube, you need to check all the embroidery classes out. I mean, I mean, you learn so much. Sarah was one of my number one person that teach me how to do embroideries for years. And I'm so happy that she is still one of the best embroiderers out there. So with that said, happy world embroidery to all the creative people out there. And this is one hobby that I would love to keep adventuring on because every time you learn something new and it's fantastic. I love the threads. I love the the colors. I love the vibrant colors and everything that goes with it. I'm from um, Pennsylvania. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I'm from the United States, and this is awesome that we are recognizing embroidery. With that said, this is Elise from Boss Up Mixed Media Embroidery Art. Bye.
My name is Kana. I'm from Kobe, Japan. Today, I'm going to show you this latest embroidery. I worked on this piece because I'm into stitching rabbit these days. I use the padded silk shading to make these bunnies and painted background. This couple gets along so well and they are about to go to their own happy paradise. I love Brussels to the rainbow as a sign of good fortune. Sarah's YouTube channel really got me into this kind of needle lace. Thank you always, Sarah. I really enjoyed stitching this piece. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Pauline and I live in Dorset and I'd love to show you my stitch book. This is a book I made following a video by you, Sarah. I decided to use all the pieces of work that I had spare that I haven't used for anything else. This is a piece of hard anger. Some of the work is following workshops that I've done. The piece where it says mum is a bit that she did some time ago. These are odd pieces of embroidery that I have left over. That's a card I made for my father some years ago. I love dragonflies and I love the sea near where I live. This is a little stump work squirrel. One workshop I did was all about rust dyeing. Mum drew the picture for that one. And that's my book I made. Hello, my name is Darren. And I'm in the United States, um, in the St. Louis metro area, near the border between the states of Missouri and Illinois. I had gotten into some basic sewing recently, maybe over the past several months, mainly repairing some small things with my work uniforms. And I've definitely thought about looking into knitting or crocheting, at least trying it out. But I can't say I had had any plans at all to do embroidery until I was in one of my big box retailers looking around, <clears throat> and I came across this embroidery kit. Not only I thought it looked pretty cool, but I happen to have a very good friend whose name is Hope. And I thought, well, I can make this for her. It'll be really cool. Now, the fact that it's marked intermediate, that gave me a little pause because after all, I was a complete beginner to embroidery. But I figured I had some basic sewing experience, so, you know, probably it wouldn't be that hard. And so here's the finished result. Mainly, um, just a lot of outline stitching, nearly any of the borders even like these parts on the flower petals up here, the parts within the leaves, that's all outline stitching. Some straight or running stitches um, in this area though. Satin stitching, of course, around here and down here. Chain stitch just up there. And back stitching only in this one part here. And lazy daisies up here. And of course, then some different French knots in different places. Although I think French knots technically call for one wrap and I did multiple wrappings, two, three, or four on some, but you know, um, I will say, if you really looked at this closely, there's definitely some imperfections, some things that couldn't be weren't as good as they could have been. Most egregious thing was down around here. I accidentally cut a hole in the fabric um, when I was cutting a waist knot loose, but I went ahead and darned it with white sewing thread, and the darn held up well enough to even allow the satin stitching there still to be done. So you know, no problem, I guess ultimately. <laughs> and if I owned an iron, I probably would have ironed this fabric ahead of time. You can see there's some wrinkling. Well, definitely down there, there's some wrinkling at least. Um, when this had been in the hoop, though, for several weeks, it actually straightened out. I had to t kind of loosen it and kind of put it back to get it readjusted at the end, so it's possible that it may straighten out again in time, but if not, not such a bad thing. 
But yeah, and I hesitate to show this, but on the back, I actually finished it with the um, with a felt backing sewed on. But definitely, you can see, definitely not the best work. I didn't put nearly as much effort, I think, into this as I did to the front. But after all, it's the back. It's not going to be seen. And it'll, it'll serve its purpose. So, you know, so it goes. But yeah, um, it was fun to make. And a little aggravating a couple times, but it was fun to make overall. And I'm, I'm glad I did it. I hope my friend likes it. And I'm happy to participate in World Embroidery Day in this video. Thanks. Hello, Sarah. It's Sharon from um, Alberta, Canada just outside of Calgary in between, well, it's in the foothills actually, um, just before you get to Banff is where I'm living currently. Um, and I've been living in Canada for the last 20 years and emigrated from Britain um, at that time. Um, I'm showing my piece today. Um, I've been following you uh, for quite some time now and enjoyed your your tutorship um, in helping me to move forward with my embroidery skills. Um, you'll see that I do have in the back here um, my other piece that I did with you which was the dragonfly and um, and I decided to have a go at um, the gold work and so I sent off to you for all of my gold work um, embellishments here um, all of the threads and they arrived and um, so I decided to have a go at, um, at creating my elephant. And I'm very pleased with the result. Um, this little piece will be going off to the Calgary Stampede um, just in July here it's coming up um, and it's going to go on display there in their Western Showcase um, where they display um, all various pieces of artwork and embroidery and lots of things like that so this year i've chosen to put this this um this piece in so i hope you like it it's so wonderful to watch all your videos and um and to connect with you in the uk and uh yeah thanks very much and for your support and and for your continuing wonderful skills that you share with us thank you bye bye oh and happy world embroidery day thank you Hello, I'm Janet. I'm 83 years old and I live in Cornwall in the UK. I came to embroidery rather late in life, but having watched Sarah's tutorials, I've gained both skills and inspiration. From this, I've made my granddaughter and embroidered pictures of my childhood in Kent during the 1940s. The first one is the house where I was born. The next one is a picture of my mother and I collecting wood during the war as fuel was so short this was needed for the range both for cooking and hot water. The next picture is my father and myself going into Canterbury after the Blitz to see whether we could help with the damage. I remember my father trying to help me step over the huge water pipes that were needed to put out the fires. The next picture is me going to school for the first time. In the summer we had certain rituals and one was cherry picking. My father used to take a week's holiday to help with the, the harvest. The next one was hop picking and we all joined in that to pick the hops the next one was as children playing at harvest time. We loved playing in the cornfields, but we used to get chased off by the farmer in case we damaged the, fire, the, the corn. One of my jobs as a child was to wash my own socks, so I used to sit in the garden and wash them. As we grew up, we were allowed even more freedom, and we had camps and campfires, which we loved. I wish children had the same freedom now. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a, a wonderful life and the best of wishes. Thank you for sharing this with me. Hello, my name is Mary and I am from Santiago, Chile. I'm currently working on three different projects made with long and short stitch technique. Some of you will recognize these two patterns from Stitching Sabbaticals book. I think they're looking pretty good so far. 
yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> also, I'm slowly working on my own head pattern. Slow but steady. I think I'm doing a nice job so far. Um, and lastly, I am trying to keep Sarah's advice to in keeping the back as clean as possible. And I have to say, it's quite satisfying to see almost a replica of the front in the back. And yeah, I, I think that's everything I have so far. Thanks you, Sarah, for the opportunity to share our, for the opportunity you're giving us to share our work with the community and i can't wait to see others creation yeah have a nice day and keep conquering the world hi sarah hi john hi ginger cat my name is cerise i'm in texas in the united states uh, i found your channel last year i don't remember exactly no this year probably january this year and have watched so many of your videos you reignited my love of embroidery. My maternal grandmother uh, taught me a few stitches when I was very young, and I did it up until, I guess it was in my 20s, um, but I just did a few stitches. Uh, I found your channel, and I had found a kit at the dollar store and put it together, and I was so hooked, and I've gotten every book I can find in the used bookstores on embroidery and cruel embroidery, and Jacobean specifically. That's my favorite and um, just got hooked. I joined the local uh, Embroiderers Guild of America here in Texas, and we're the Permian Basin chapter, and I convinced the girls uh, in our, well, most of the girls in our group to send pictures of the things they've done, and I'm gonna put them here in this short video and just share some of the beautiful things. They're much more experienced than I am, and they're just absolutely gorgeous, but I wanted to share what we have and what we've done and um, all I have is photos, but I just wanted to thank you for giving us an audience to share our love of the, um, the needlework and embroidery. So again, we appreciate you so much and we hope you enjoy our, our part of World Embroidery Day. Hi guys, my name is Laura Fuller. I'm from South Wales, and this is my um, wall hanging. Um, I was inspired by Sarah Humphrey on her stump work, and basically I've been in love ever since. <laughs> um, now my husband is going to um, do a few close-ups for you of the wire work. Um, which is the green work there. It basically has given the leaves um, a lovely 2D effect. That, and then below that is the um, beads that I use with um, pearl, ju pearl jewellery, which I use the thinner wire um, work for that, which is a gold, a thinner gold. And then I add the, um, the eagle there. Now with the eagle, um, you might have to excuse my foot, um I did the eagle work now I use the wire I use for the wings and the wire actually comes off the fabric so it gives um the eagle a very should we say a very um striking should we should we say impactful and I've done the eagle sort of coming down on a wheel 
um, which and the wheel is using the open buttonhole stitch, which again was from Sarah Humphrey. Um, and it's got the Lords of Lords there, um, because basically this is inspired by medieval times where the eagle represented a spiritual holy leader. Um, so, and the actual fabric does remind me of um, medieval. Um, now, this is the size of a double double bed, um, hence why it is huge. And we're, we're, I'm in talks of this being shown at a Tudor um, house, which is 1,500 years old. And, 500. Sorry, 500 years old. And yeah, and that would just be amazing. Um, so thank you, Sarah. We love your channel. Um, you can follow me on Lara Fuller, Earth and Art, on YouTube, um, where I show my textiles. Um, I also do mixed media with paints. Um, so thank you. Um, um, have a good day and goodbye from Wales. Bye. Hello, Sarah. Hello, everyone. It's uh, so good to see you again, Sarah, and thank you so much for uh, supporting this uh, adventure and sharing our uh, embroidery work. My name is Lois and I live in Portland, Oregon, or just outside of Portland um, in America. And Oregon is between the states of Washington and California, if you know where those two are. Um, I've been stitching a long time and I really like to try new uh, techniques or new ideas about stitching. I've really been interested in the slow stitching uh, here recently. And I became interested in um, wool felting recently and thought I would like to try that. So I bought myself a kit and um, this is what I made. Now I modified almost everything in here. For example, I added those two little bunnies on the bottom and that caterpillar. I changed most of the colors, <laughs> left some things out that I didn't care for, etc. So anyway, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it. Um, I usually like to um, try different stitches also that I've never done before. So there's quite a few stitches in there that um, I've never done and it was a lot of fun. Um, Let's see, um, next week I'm gonna get help from a woman who does finishing work and she's gonna teach me how to finish that into a wall hanging. So another new skill that I'm gonna develop uh, next week. I'm very excited about it. Um, okay, that's it for me. Um, Sarah, I look forward to the day when you come back to Portland and have a class. So until then, goodbye. Hello, Sarah, and all you lovely embroidery fans from all over the world. I'm Caroline from Rheinbach in Germany, and I'm very new to this fantastic hobby. So this is my third piece ever. It's um, a mermaid, because I love aquatic themes and mermaids. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, it's um, also with watercolors because uh, when I discovered watercolor embroidery, I was so in love with it because of the colors and the possibilities. And so I also bought watercolors. And um, so this is my first piece with watercolors. And as you can see, um, there are also beads. And because I wanted it to sparkle a lot, uh, I took also metal threads and satin threads and yeah, the scales were very, very difficult. <laughs> um, yeah, and the back is a total mess. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I want to show you my, my very first piece of embroidery. It's this tree. And as you can see, uh, I even didn't have a hoop. So I was waiting for the hoop to come. and But I was so excited and wanted to start that um, I nailed it on this frame and um, yeah, started to stitch. <laughs> okay, I also started an Instagram account which is dedicated to this beautiful hobby and I would love you to see you there. Thank you, bye! 
Hi, I'm Jenny Miller and I live in Tucson, Arizona in the USA. And here in Tucson, we're part of the Sonoran Desert, which is a place with a lot of unique plants and animals. You may have heard of our famous giant saguaro cactus. Another one of our, my favorites is the Palo Verde tree, which is what my embroidery piece is about that I wanted to show you today. Uh, here in the desert, it's really way too hot and dry to really have much in the way of leaves. And so the Palo Verde has decided instead of leaves, it's gonna have a very bright green bark and it photosynthesizes through its bark. So you can see that right here is all the uh, trunk and the stems of the plant. Um, and then once a year in the spring, around April, it will bloom these bright yellow flowers and that you can just see seas of Palo Verde trees throughout town um, with their clouds of yellow flowers and they're really spectacular. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my embroidery with you and I really look forward to seeing everybody else's very much. Bye now. Hi guys, my name is George. I'm from Kraljevo, Serbia. Uh, and here's a spring landscape I finished a couple of days ago. Uh, I designed it myself uh, and I used uh, two slanted goblin stitches to fill one square. I could have used cross stitch but my whole life uh, I've been surrounded by tapestries uh, embroidered by my grandma and my mom uh, done in Goblin stitch, and uh, when I notice that they are uh, pixel art made out of floss, I just have to give it a go. Uh, now, here's how this scene looks like when the snow falls. Uh, I stitched this one last year, uh, and it only uses 10 colors. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Vezemo, which means uh, we're stitching in Serbia. And I hope we'll continue stitching together in the future. Hi everyone, my name's Christine and I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I love working with fabric and thread. This is a wall hanging piece that I've created with the theme of Down the Garden Path. In the foreground is a scrappy robin with a little vintage key from my grandpa's collection. And then we come through to our secret garden wall and door. I share my stitching adventures over on my YouTube channel, Create and Craft with Christine. Just keep pulling it down. Then we come up to a scene with Peter Rabbit and his friends up to mischief in the garden. Um, I love adding dimensional elements like this hedge here and creating little nests with little um, seed beads in them using um, oats or leftover thread. Then we come up to a garden scene with thread painted cats galore and ribbon embroidery and um, thread embroidery for the flowers. Lots of fun experimenting with different stitches, beading and other techniques. And then we come up into one of my favorite parts of the piece, which is the moonlit wildflower garden. So the moonlit illuminating the flowers and then coming back to a scene in the background with the moon and mountains and a lake. So I hope you like that little glimpse of some of the work I've been doing. You can head over to my YouTube channel if you'd like to check out more. Thanks everyone. Bye. Hi, my name is Kristen. I live in Pennsylvania in the United States and I started embroidering about two years ago as a late COVID hobby. And I picked it up because Sarah's videos um, showed up in my algorithm and I thought it was something that I wanted to give a try. Um, I never really thought that I would um, be very good at it. And I think maybe I'm not awful at it. <laughs> so I wanted to share two pieces with you today. Um, the first one is, um, it's a bat cat. <laughs> And um, he is primarily outline stitch with some, some satin. Um, I got this pattern off of Etsy and uh, the, the store's name is Eternally Homemade. Uh, he looks a lot like my cat, but without, without the wings, um, thankfully. Uh, and then the second one uh, that I wanted to share with you is a mosaic fountain. Um, this is 
the most detailed piece I've worked on since I started. Uh, it The architecture is all um, single thread whip stitch and very, very tiny single thread um, satin. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but it took me a very long time to do. I had to walk away from it for a little bit, but um, I'm really glad that I came back to it. And I got that pattern uh, also on Etsy and the store's called Nomad Embroidery Company. Uh, I thank you so much, Sarah, for all of the, um, the content that you put out. You really have an excellent way of instructing. Um, it didn't take me terribly long to, I might have to watch a couple videos a couple times, but I did pick it up and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you for everything that you do and for all of us who are just getting started in this and um, I look forward to watching more of your videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Eloise and I am from Johannesburg, South Africa. I first started embroidering around three months ago and I just wanted a creative hobby that I could pick up whenever I had some free time. So my first little sampling piece, I used a lot of Sarah's videos to understand some stitches and, and just figuring out how they're meant to look and how the different stitches work together. I then made this piece where I tried some lettering. It says today is a new day. And I put a whole bunch of uh, flowers and leaves in a wreath pattern around the words. I then got a little bit more confident and I got a kit from a local South African embroidery artist and I made this. So this is a lilac breasted roller. Um, it's a bird we see often in South Africa and I really enjoy birding. So this was a really fun way of combining two of my hobbies into one piece. I also really enjoyed this kit as it is very colorful and the bird itself is quite iridescent. Then I wanted to create something that was a bit more functional and so I designed this little bookmark. On the front it says just one more chapter and on the back it says it has a little moon and so that sort of just signals okay it's time to put the book down and go to bed. I used quite a few of Sarah's videos to bring this to life um, and yeah it was really helpful to learn how to use stitch around corners. Um, I'm still practicing that it's not perfect yet. But I really enjoy embroidery and I'm looking forward to creating more pieces in the future. And I'm really grateful for all the help that I've gotten from Sarah's videos. Thank you. Hi Sarah, it's Helen here from North Yorkshire in the UK. Happy World Embroidery Day. I just thought I'd share a couple of projects with you. Uh, my first piece will be my Indian elephant. And the second piece will be some um, Hardanger cluster blocks work that I've made just freestyle. So here is my elephant. Here she is. Absolutely beautiful and I've loved making her. Uh, your instructions from your video were so easy to follow. So thank you very much. She was wonderful. Love how the light catches the shisha mirrors. I've got little beads on her hooves and on her cap. The uh, pretty pink faux leather is just adorable in the light and thoroughly enjoyed making her. She's going to be great when she's framed and on my wall. Wonderful. And then my second piece is uh, some cluster block work. I've made this on a fabric that was an 18 count rather than 22 and it was also a hand dyed piece that I'd got from somewhere uh, which was blue as I say and so that's inspired me to use cream, blue and gold thread and I've also along the edge in here uh, put in some uh, little gold beads. So this was a great piece. I wasn't entirely sure of the pattern that I was going to create, but this is how it came out and I was really happy with this. So this will be frame two. And no doubt this one will go in on my wall as well. So thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much for all your, uh, your videos. I love watching them. You're fantastic. Thank you. Hi, this is Linda. I'm also known as Fiber Jazz and I'm coming to you today from Bucks County in Pennsylvania. 
About a year ago, I decided I wanted to try to learn how to cross stitch. So I purchased this little kitty cat, which was a DMC kit, and it was designed for children. So I thought, huh, that sounded like a good place for me to try to start. And um, I began working on it and decided fairly quickly that I really don't care for the Ada cloth. Um, it seemed kind of clunky and it was very stiff. I was also getting a bit bored with the stitches with just the regular cross stitch. So I visited Sarah's stitch library and decided to try to add a few of her specialized stitches here to bring some additional texture. I wasn't completely successful. One of the things that I tried that I did like the way it worked out was adding a vertical cross, an upright cross on top of a horizontal cross, which you can see here. Here's one, if I can point to it, right up here. And I, I did like the way that one turned out. I added a few more to make some smaller raised portions in the center of these red flowers here, here, and here. The next thing I decided to try was the scroll stitch. And I made a bit of a mess with that. I used that here in the tail to make these stem shapes and um, it looks pretty messy. I didn't have enough room really to maneuver and I probably should have used fewer strands. I'm also not thrilled with how these white colonial knots turned out on the ends of the stems. I also did some colonial knots in here, these yellow knots, and these, these turned out better. These white ones are just too large, but it was a learning experience and, and it's finished and I'll be happy to hang this on a wall or probably give it to one of my grandnieces who was having another baby. And now I will show you what I switched to next. It was an, a larger cross stitch pattern where I stuck to just simply cross stitch. And I'm going to pause this video for just a moment while I bring that one into the camera's view. Be right back. Okay, here we are with the next project. And again, I said this was a cross stitch. This represents four ceramic tiles from Talavera de la Reina in Spain. And these formed part of a larger project that had been published by Linens and Threads, or Linen and Threads, which unfortunately is now out of business. But this was a challenging project for me. I'm going to zoom in to show you a bit more of the detail on this. Although this looks like it's black and white here in the video, it's actually a dark navy blue and white. And I really, really enjoyed the intricacy of this particular design. It did pose a challenge for me. The, probably the biggest challenge that I had was trying to determine the path to follow to execute all of these stitches. And not only just, you know, just to do it so that it resembled the design, but also so that the back of the fabric looked as neat as possible. That wasn't you know, something that was particularly easy for me. And, and I am thinking that I did not do that great of a job. And I'll show you the back of this here. Just one moment, bear with me while I flip this over. So here you can see the back. I was a little bit more successful with the title. That one didn't turn out too badly back here. But in the other areas, as you can see, it's pretty messy. I did managed to avoid any long strands of the floss across the white areas, but I would really love to learn how to do reversible cross stitching so that I could have a back that was really neat and improve the appearance of my stitching on the front as well. So Sarah, if you are ever able to make a tutorial on reversible cross stitching or any sort of reversible embroidery stitching, I'd really, really love to learn a little bit more about that. Anyway, this is what I've been able to do. I've not been able to do any stitching in the last eight months. So unfortunately, I don't have too much to show here. I do have the pattern for uh, Sarah, for your gold work butterflies, the gold and the silver butterflies. I hope to have at least one of those made to show you next year. And I've also been working on some sketches for other embroidery projects that I would like to undertake once I'm able to get going with my hand again. In the meantime, sending good wishes to all of you. Be well. I love watching your video, Sarah, and I really enjoy all the comments and the sharing of work from the other stitchers who follow you. 
Thanks again. Bye-bye. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm Keenan Powell from Anchorage, Alaska, and I've been working on a Celtic peacock. This first piece is a practice piece, and I had um, used Sarah's technique that she used on the Indian elephant with the valine and painted it and sewed it on there for the neck. I uh, couched twist in Japanese here. I like that. I couched Japanese here and I had gaps. I didn't like that so I put spangles all over them. Then there was this cut work on the wing and um, it, it was I wasn't thrilled with the spirals because I couldn't turn them. And then cut work on the feathers, the tail feathers I liked. So then I did the colored version which is what the final version. Just finished it. There you go. And with this one, I, instead of using the valine, I used silk rods. And um, I had one piece that was large enough to cover the entire neck there. And then for the feathers over here, I cut them in feather shapes and trimmed them with metal pearl and then a giant old uh, sequin there. And then a whole lot of couching work and cut work in, for the wing. And then this plate. Um, which I folded back and forth, and it's it's not that bad. Um, the first hook's fine, uh, the folding's fine, and it's just getting that second hook and tying it down that um, is a learning experience. And then there was a cut work for the feathers, the tail feathers, and I'm pretty pleased with it. Happy uh, World Embroidery Day, and thanks for the opportunity to share. Hi, uh, my name is Rachel from Wiltshire in the UK and here is my contribution for World Embroidery Day uh, 2023. Um, I uh, really enjoyed um, a Boro workshop uh, with a group that I regularly go to and um, as a result of this I um, made this um, handmade book cover. Um, I uh, cut up lots of pieces of fabric and uh, tacked them to uh, a piece of calico and then I uh, used various uh, simple stitches um, to enhance it. Um, there were no rules at all and it was really enjoyable. I also um, tried um, a bit of block printing with the rabbit on the front um and um also on the back uh some various block printing and a few embellishments um but it was really freeing um you can actually do whatever you like with the the, the threads uh change the length change the thickness of the thread and just enjoy it um those are the only rules. <laughs> um, so that's my piece. Um, I've also been working on this piece here, uh, which is a, a mobile for a nursery. Um, it's for my great nephew, um, who's due to arrive at any time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to uh, Sarah and Jonathan. Um, I know you're uh, both a team effort uh, to do the videos and uh, very much appreciate the excellent resource. Uh, this is my second video. I know you've done a huge amount, 340 um, brilliant videos um, with uh, excellent explanations and knowledge so just to say thank you for that as well okay thanks and hope this is included thanks bye hi sarah and jonathan and the embroidery community that you've created um this year i have uh, three different pieces to share um most of my time's been going to a year-long crazy quilt course uh, and in between that, I decided I wanted to uh, take a couple of classes and uh, learn a couple of different techniques. The first one that I'd like to share is, um, is wool. It's wool applique on wool. And I use decorative embroidery stitches. And I really like the way that it turned out.
I hope you can catch those colors. Um, having a little problem with the light here, but I think you got it. Okay. The next one is my first attempt at cruel embroidery. It was an intro to cruel work. Uh, and it's called How Does Your Garden Grow? The design is by Carol Pio, who is a teacher for the Embroidery Guild of America. And uh, this, this is, uh, this is it. I love the little bird. That's really what drew me in. Okay. And there is a third piece. It's on another video. Uh, I'm not as talented as Jonathan is in knowing how to put them together. So that is coming up and it'll be my last one. So have a wonderful year. See you all next year. And uh, keep stitching. Bye. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Jonathan. This is Karen from New Jersey in the United States across the pond, as you say. Uh, this is uh, the final piece I'm gonna show you today. This is a clothespin bag I made for my daughter, Gina. And you could see there's a little mini clothespin there. It's made out of a pattern from the 1940s called Bluebirds. Uh, she likes it a lot and she's gonna uh, put her clothespins in it. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Mullen. I live in the United States in Washington State, and this is my latest piece. It's a Nikki Franklin kit from the Stitchery. It's called Apple Tree House, and the canopy is made completely of French knots, which is my favorite stitch, so it was very, very fun to do. And then I went in with a colored pencil around the tree after, and a little bit in the windows. And then I went to Amazon and bought this cheap frame and painted and distressed it and popped the design in. And here we are. Thanks everybody, bye. I think you will agree that that's an absolutely wonderful compilation of work. It's amazing to see what you're working on. The pieces are really fabulous. If you've enjoyed this video, perhaps somebody else would as well. Do share it around with your stitching friends and family and do join our community as well. Leave a comment below and let our contributors know how much you've enjoyed seeing their pieces. And if you've enjoyed this, we do have lots more of these videos. You can check those out up here as Stitching Around the World videos. And if you haven't joined in one yet, do consider joining in for 2024. We will put lots of information up a little bit nearer the time um, and do join in our stitching embroidery community. And it just leaves me to say happy World Embroidery Day, everybody. Keep on stitching and spread the embroidery love.